Well, team, I let you down today. Man, today was a doozy. I want to break this trade down. There's a lot to learn from this one. Um, I broke my trading plan, and I want to tell you exactly why I did. And I know this is probably very disappointing to some of you because I'm always saying stick with your trade plan. But here's what happened. Here's what I want to, here's the takeaway. My trading strategy and trading plan entered a new area for me. It's an area I've never gone before. I've never been there during a trade. So I didn't have a rule in place. And now I'm going to have a rule that's going to help me if I ever get back to this same scenario again. So what happened today was I took a loser to the upside. If you look at AMD, you can see this big tail to the top, this big wick. I triggered there and rode this up about four or $500 of profit, and then it evaporated in seconds and triggered and stopped me out. And that's okay, we lose all the time. Then it drifted down and it triggered me into the short side. And I'm gonna show you that video here. I've, spread, I've sped it up about four by four times to make it quicker for you. But what happened was I ended up being in this trade a very long time, way, way longer than any of my other trades. This is trade number 108 and trade 109 that you're watching today. And being that I was in the trade so long, the trade wouldn't allow me to move my stop loss. It wouldn't drop enough. And so after almost a half an hour of sort of just agony of watching my profits erode, I took it out, I took the profit, I left, I jumped out of the trade, and I wanna show you why. Um, it's just, it was just a tough scenario because you have rules in place for your trading plan, what to do when you get to certain spots. You don't wanna be making decisions in the moment. And I made a decision today in the moment. I'm gonna hit play right here. Let's show you this trade. So you can see it's drifting down, and it's just kinda of hanging around. And I'm not sure I'm even going to get triggered. I, I didn't know. And then we got triggered in. And you can see right here we're up a little bit, but it wasn't great. Um, I register there. You can see I'm uh, editing my stop loss so that I can be ready to move it. And I'm going to stop this for a second because, as you guys know, when I get triggered in, I wait for the, st I wait for the stock to go to 2.5R. And then once it gets there, I move my stop loss to 2R so that I can lock in those profits. But what happened today was it never got to two and a half R and it took forever. And so I wasn't moving that stop loss because I couldn't get to that point. So I waited and I waited and I waited and look how close I come to almost getting stopped. It almost took me out there and it kept doing this and psychologically it was playing with me in that it was giving me profit, then it would wash it away then it would give it back, then it would wash it away. And after so many ins and outs with that, I finally broke, it just broke me down. And I exited early and you'll see what happens. This is gonna shock you, stay, stay with this. This isn't a very long um, replay on this video here, but you can see it ebb and flow, up and down, up and down. Right now I'm okay with it because I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever. But once it starts to surge, like right here, it starts to give me decent profit there's a specific point in here where it breaks and it gives me about $250 profit. And remember, two and a half R for me is $750. So I'm waiting for $750 to come in. And I do want to point out right now that we've now moved on to the second 15 minute candle. My trades, they don't, they never last this long. So if they do go this long, I typically have already moved my stop loss. So now I'm just sitting back and watching because I'm, I've locked in my, my profit if it goes against me. But right now I haven't locked in my profit and psychologically I'm still carrying the loss from the upside. So in my head I'm thinking this could be a double loss day, which happens. But I don't want it to happen obviously. So I feel like I'm quick on the trigger, my hand's on the trigger. I'm just waiting to see what's gonna happen. And as we get this drop to the downside right there, that told me, okay, things are looking a lot better. I'm gonna stick with it. I've got my, my uh, stop loss here ready to go. I'm gonna fire it off once I get to $750 on the P&L. Now look at the P&L. We're in the three, 
50s, 380s, we even hit 400, 424, 436, and then look how it takes it away. It zips back up into the low threes, comes back to the 400s. I'm just trying to stick with it. Everything's fine right now. I'm just waiting, just waiting. But then it starts to spook me right there. Do you see it go back in the twos, the low 200s? And now I'm thinking, okay, I lost $300 on the first trade because 300 is my risk value, my R value. So I don't want it to go under 300 because I want to wipe out that loss. Now look, we're in the 500s, 550. We're almost a 2R, and then it starts to kind of take it away from me again, back in the 400s. So I'm just struggling psychologically in this trade because it's almost to the point where I can move my stop, but not quite. So I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting, and it's still not giving it to me. So I'm just trying to stay consistent here. It's dropping down. So now we're in the sixes, which is looking really good, but look at that right there. I'm just going to back this up just a little bit. It came all the way back to 313. And in my head, I just kept thinking, I lost 300. I need to try to make at least 300. But that's the wrong process for the trade. I need to be committed to either a full loss or a full win. When you play in that gray area, that in-between, you end up taking smaller winners and you end up taking full losers. So overall, you're going to end away, you're going to end up cutting away at your margins. So I'll keep playing this. We're almost done with it. It pushes back down. You can see now we're in the 460s, 430s, but it keeps pressing back up. It bounces and it keeps acting like it's going to take those profits away. We go to 500, we go back into the 300s. We go to the 450s, we go back to the 300s. So at this point, I'm just not convinced that it's going to go anywhere. And right there, you can see what I did. I punched out. I took a gain of $477.55 and punched out. And now what I want to do, and this is the part that's, that's tough to show you guys because I broke my plan and I'm always preaching to stick with your plan, but here's what happened. I'm going to flip over to the charts. Look what AMD did. Look at this candle. This was the 15, 30, 45. So in the first hour, we got down to 92.15. And so if we just do some math, let me grab my, my calculator here. Let's just walk through this so I can show you kind of what happened. Um, I got triggered in here at the lows. I got in at 93.74. So 93.74, and I subtract this candle's low, 92.16. So that gives us $1.58. And then what you can do is take this $1.58 and you can divide it by your stop loss, which for me was 25 cents. So right there, 6.32R is what that would have produced. Obviously, that's the bottom of this candle. You can't bottom tick anything. That's really hard to do. But if I multiply that by my R value, which is 300, that means that I made $180 today instead of 1900 so you can see why I'm struggling with that. That's a, that's a tough thing to, it's tough to deal with. It, it happens. And I think the takeaway here is because as day traders, the one thing that I want to tell you all is that you have to have a short memory. You're going to have big wins. You're going to have little losers. You're going to have clusters of losers. You'll be frustrated. But you can't get too celebratory and hung up on any one winner. And you can't get hung up on any cluster of losers. You have to stick with your metrics. Your back-tested win percentage is what's going to help you get through these times like this. And for me, I win 54% of the time now. I have to just say, I'm okay with that. I missed this one. I got to move on. Because if you get hung up on it, I think psychologically, it'll create a thread into your next trade and it's going to affect you. So after this recap video, I'm going to wipe it clean. Slate's clean. I'm done. This is out of my memory. I've moved on. I still made money today. The week is still doing great. We're up 3R on the week. I have to be okay with that. But I think we have to have that takeaway. What can we learn from this? And the learning part of this is I encountered a new situation. So what I need to do is create a rule that addresses this situation. Here's my challenge to all of you today. I want you to get a piece of paper out 
I want you to write down your trade strategy and management plan. I want you to write every step of it like an algorithm. So you get triggered in when what happens? Then when that happens, what do you wait for in terms of, a tr of your stop loss? When do you move it? When do you not move it? Have all those rules written down because I think if you write them down and put them on the wall next to your trading station, you're going to see them and you're going to know, okay, it's just rogue memory. I know that if I get to 2R, I take all my profit. Maybe that's your rule. Or I wait to go to 3R and then I move my stop loss to 2R. Whatever your plan is, lay it out on paper today, right now. Because you don't want to get into a situation like I just got into and not know what the answer is. If I would have stuck with this trade, this would have been a week's pay. This would have been a week, well, or a few days pay. This is a massive, this is just a, a big missed opportunity and it's okay because we're gonna learn from it. And I hope that what I'm sharing helps you. You might say, why are you complaining? I'm not complaining. You might say, why are you concerned you still won. You still had a victory. You still came ahead green. I did. But you've got to remember, your winners have to be, they have to outpace your losers. So today, my win was $180. If I take one loser tomorrow, that erases that winner and puts me down some. Your winners have to be bigger than your losers. If you start to skew your results and get away from that, that's a slippery slope and you're trading profits are gonna massively suffer. So, takeaways. Write down your trading plan. I'm gonna do it too. I'll even, I'll even take a picture of it if you guys want. I'm gonna write it down on a piece of paper. I'm gonna have it set. I'm gonna review every scenario. I want you to do that too, and I want you to comment below and let me know when you've finished it up. And then what I wanna do is I wanna take away that this is a new rule that will go into the plan so that tomorrow I know I'm either taking the full loser or the full winner. I can't allow there to be in between, okay? I do have specific rules surrounding larger moves and trades, and that's for another video. But for right now, I'm committing to all of you and to myself that I'm either taking the full loser, the full 1R loser, or the full 2.5 winner or beyond. There's not going to be any, or my stop loss when I move it to 2 and 2.25. So I'll say it's either a 2 winner or great, a 2 R winner or greater, or I take the full 1 R stop loss, but I cannot take these partial winners. And psychologically, when I take that loser on the upside, when I lost here this morning, I lost up here first, when that happens, I have to have a very short term memory and let that go. This is a new trade. If I get triggered in the short side, because you guys know I put a trade on the top and a trade on the bottom of this last 15 minute candle. If I get triggered into the second trade and I'm coming into it with a loser, I have to forget about it and move on. It's a new trade. The first trade doesn't affect the second trade. We gotta psychologically partition these things off because on the other side of these good mechanics is steady progress on your P&L. Okay, so if you have questions about this trade today, please put them below in the comments. I want to hear from you guys. Again, I apologize for breaking my plan. I'm implementing new rules to address this, and that's all we can do as traders. If you happen to break your, your plan or something happens that's unexpected, formulate a new plan to address it. If you've done that, you can stay proud of yourself for the day. You can say, I'm proud of my trading because I'm addressing the problem. It's when you don't address it and you let it go on and on. That becomes the problem. So, a little bit of a sobering video today. Um, it, it, great because I'm green. I'm thankful. It's, it's fine. I'm moving on. After this video, I'm wiping the slate clean. We'll start again fresh tomorrow. I want to hear about all of your trades in the comment section below. Let's blow that section up. Let's, let, I want to see 50 comments today. I want to hear about everybody's trading plan and outcomes today. I hope this video is helpful. Um, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button if you got any value from it, and if you're not part of our Facebook group, go to the banner on the YouTube page or the section below here, the description, there'll be a link. Come join us where we can discuss trades and grow as a day trading community. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow.